So recently I heard or I read that um, LVMH, the conglomerate that owns multiple brands, has decided to convert some of their perfume factories to make hand sanitizer because of the shortage of hand sanitizer. And hand sanitizer is something that we are really needing these days because of what's going on in the world. So if you don't know who LVMH is, today I wanted to discuss this conglomerate and also tell you some of my favorite brands under this conglomerate and some of the fragrances that they actually have produced. So if you want to find out about LVMH and some of their brands and fragrances and learn about the hand sanitizer that they are now producing, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, this is something I read about five days ago and I thought, you know what, this could be an interesting video to do. Not only to discuss what they're doing and also discuss uh, the conglomerate themselves, LVMH, Louis Vuitton, Moet, and Hennessy. And also tell you some of the fragrances and the brands that they have uh, launched or have acquired. But before we do that, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you love watching fragrance reviews, finding out about new fragrances, discovering new brands, and of course participating in giveaways and still haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So I speak about a lot of LVMH brands on this channel and the three brands that are probably the most popular are Dior, Christian Dior, Givenchy, and also Guerlain. Now these are all under Louis Vuitton, Moet, and Hennessy, the, the brand. And um, these are also the three brands that they own uh, probably are uh, releasing the most fragrances from uh, these three houses. Now Louis Vuitton, Moet, and Hennessy have multiple brands, and I'm going to tell you all the brands, but let me tell you a little bit about this news I heard. Now most of the time I kind of criticize LVMH as a conglomerate, but I think what they're doing now is really uh, an awesome thing. They're actually converting their um, Givenchy, Dior, and also Guerlain uh, perfume manufacturing plants into uh, manufacturing or producing hand sanitizer because of the shortage of hand sanitizer out there for us uh, because of what's going on in the world currently. Um, so I thought that that was a great idea that they did that and so, uh, also read a few other more localized or indie uh, perfume uh, brands or perfumers were also doing this, but I felt like this was the biggest uh, news and coming from a big conglomerate, a uh, multi-million dollar uh, conglomerate like LVMH who owns many, many brands, I felt like this was a great thing. I read that they're not actually putting a brand name on it, so it's not going to be a Dior hand sanitizer, it's not going to be a Guerlain hand san sanitizer, or it's not going to be a Givenchy hand sanitizer. It's just going to be unnamed, just hand sanitizer, so basically they've converted uh, the uh, three uh, factories or plants that uh, produce the fragrances for Guerlain, Dior, and Givenchy, and they're completely going to do hydroalcoholic gel hand sanitizer, which is awesome. And we need some because I'm having such a difficult time finding hand sanitizer here in San Francisco. Um, nothing. Uh, and uh, so having brands or conglomerates like this doing such a thing is a great thing. But in addition to that, I thought, you know what, that news was uh, published on uh, March 15th and immediately I posted it on my Facebook page and I'm really happy that they, there are, you know, companies like this that are completely stopping or halting the production of, you know, what they're known for and um, giving us the help that we need with uh, finding this kind of, or producing this kind of um, items that we are all needing at this moment. Hopefully every one of you are staying safe uh, while this is all happening. And I did eventually find some hand sanitizer and I bought some. And I've also ordered some from Amazon that is supposed to be shipped at the end of the month. So we'll see what happens. But uh, let me tell you a little bit about LVMH. LVMH stands for Louis Vuitton, Moet, and Hennessy. They are known for um, multiple brands, so many different brands, but uh, they were formed in 1987, and you probably are familiar with Louis Vuitton. That's one brand, and they also produce uh, fragrances, but I didn't read that they're going to convert their uh, plant or factory into producing uh, the hand sanitizer. But there's Moet, Champagne, Hennessy, 
Cognac. These are all um, very, very well-known brands, but they have companies in the wine and spirits uh, world, fashion and leather goods world, perfumes and cosmetics world, watches and jewelry world, retailing, and speaking of retailing, Sephora is right under LVMH. They are owned by LVMH, so this is a big, big corporation. And then, of course, there's also some other um, uh, companies that are also falling under the LVMH uh, conglomerate, but um, uh, they own many, many brands. I'm not going to get into all the brands. I'm going to mostly speak about the perfumes and beauty brands, but also just recently they purchased or acquired um, Tiffany and Company. So they bought them out. And I think Tiffany's fragrances, which I don't own any Tiffany fragrances. I don't know if you guys do. And if you are a fan, I know in the 2000s, Tiffany had some great fragrances for men, but I, don't, I haven't really l l researched or looked into the Tiffany fragrances that are more recent. And Tiffany's fragrances are currently under Coty as a brand. So we'll see what they do once they convert over to um, LVMH. So some of the brands that I speak about on this channel that are under the LVMH umbrella include Louis Vuitton. Of course, I speak about Louis Vuitton, Christian Dior or Dior. I speak about Dior. I speak about Givenchy. I speak about Guerlain. Uh, Maison Francis Cookchen is under them. They were acquired in 2016, I believe, or was sold to them. Loewe is another fashion house from Spain, and then also Aqua, Aqua de Parma. So those are the only brands that I specifically own any fragrances from that are under the LVMH umbrella. But um, other brands include, and I'm going to read them off to you, uh, Kenzo is one, which I should probably get back into Kenzo. Fresh, I love Fresh as a brand. Benefit Cosmetics, it's actually a San Francisco brand. Fen Fenty Beauty by Rihanna. Kenzo, I already mentioned Kenzo, KVD Vegan Beauty, Makeup Forever, Marc Jacobs Beauty, and also they recently purchased Jean Patou just before they bought, uh, or not, but they pur they purchased or acquired Jean Patou, but then the Jean Patou is known for a fragrance called Joy, and then actually right after they purchased Jean Patou, I recall them launching um, a fragrance under Dior uh, for a um, woman called Joy. So. Um, they buy a lot of brands, a lot of a lot of brands, and they're a very, very wealthy company, very, very luxury. I would just call them a very luxury goods brand. But some of the fragrances that are under these uh, particular brands that I spoke about, like Guerlain is very well known for perfumes and mostly perfumes and makeup and beauty products and things like that. And they're known for Shalimar, of course. Everybody knows Shalimar. It's probably the ultimate uh, perfume or maybe even oriental perfume because it's a vanillic, uh, things like that. So so most people know about um, uh, Shalimar. But what I'm gonna show you here today is um, Habi Rouge in the Eau de Parfum concentration. Um, a lot of fragrances fall under here and very, very popular fragrances in this um, the house, Guerlain. I do have a top 20 video on Guerlain fragrances. You should go catch that. But I speak about a lot of them, like Spiritus Double Vanille, Tonka Imperial, Bois de Harmony, Shalimar, Habit Rouge, Heritage, Vetiver, cannot forget Vetiver. And recently, I've been speaking about Mandarin Basilique, a lot of different great fragrances. But this one, Habit Rouge, uh, is uh, for men, and this is the EDP version. And it's a vanillic, woody, citrus combo, and uh, one that doesn't go out of style. And um, definitely, this one falls under the LVMH umbrella because they have acquired Guerlain. And I don't remember when they acquired Guerlain, but I think it was sometime in the 2000s. A wonderful house. I specifically consider Guerlain um, more on the niche rather than a designer, it, but it is owned by a, you know, a conglomerate that owns lots of different designer brands. So it's, it's a technicality, but what do you guys think? Do you think uh, Guerlain is uh, a designer? Because a lot of people feature designer fragrances uh, with Guerlain under their designer videos, but it's kind of a technicality. But this is a wonderful fragrance. It's for men, but I have named several other fragrances, and the, the brand's been around forever, and they have some awesome, awesome fragrances. Check out my top 20 uh, if you get a chance. But uh, my favorite, uh, one of my recent and most favorite fragrances that I still haven't sampled the the new version of is from the House of Dior. Um, it, this is Dior en Parfum. Very, very wonderful fragrance. I don't know if you guys have sampled the new version of Dior en Parfum. It's nothing like this, I believe. It's more of a Parfum version of the new 2020 version of Dior Elm. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. But this one is a phenomenal release and wonderful fragrance. And I think 
No, definitely, I know for sure that this was launched under uh, while Dior was under LVMH. This originally was launched outside of LVMH, so Guerlain launched this before they were acquired by LVMH. And I think I didn't mention uh, the year LVMH was um, launched. I believe it was formed in 1987. So, yeah, Habit Rouge came out way before then. But this one in 2014, so this one definitely launched under LVMH. But a wonderful, wonderful release. I don't, th there's a lot of different. Uh, rumors out there as to if this is going to be around. I hear it is going to be around. I also hear that the new version is nothing like this. I also hear that this is uh, the new version is 100 ml. This is a uh, 75 ml. So there's all kinds of uh, confusion out there. And until I can put my nose on it and see the product myself, I really cannot speak about it. A lot of people also send me links to products that are on the USA website. I click on them, I don't have access to them, so it's kind of weird what Dior does, sadly. But this is an awesome release, and it's one of the best fragrances ever for me, and I love it. So that's Dior and Parfum. And speaking of Dior, I've got, I decided to put two Dior's on here. Eau Sauvage is, is a classic that never goes out of style. Uh, it, you know, it, it does smell a little different than the classic Eau Sauvage, but I think it smells very, very modern. I've, I heard from some people say that this is, um, Definitely an old man's cologne. I think the younger noses might not appreciate something something like this. It's a it's a citrus aromatic with vetiver and herbs and uh, aromatic notes and uh, of course citruses. Uh, great quality fragrance. It's fresh. It's refreshing. And this one was definitely launched before uh, Dior was under LVMH, uh, but uh, doesn't go out of style at all. It's a wonderful release and. Um, yeah, sure, it does remind me of a, my, my father or my dad, but uh, it's very modern, I think. Get your notes on it. You'll appreciate it because it smells wonderful. But that's another awesome fragrance that's under the LVMH umbrella that um, should be known about if you don't know about it. I'm not specifically talking about um, uh, different... Um, fragrances, but I should also mention that Fahrenheit is also another classic men's fragrance. Um, uh, what else? Uh, there's there's many. I'm looking at my collection right here. Um, it, there's, of, of course, Feb Delicious, which is uh, now rumored to be, or for sure, uh, discontinued uh, from everywhere else except for the Paris Boutique, but uh, many other fragrances. Uh, there's uh, Jules. Um, there's, of course, Sauvage, the, the, the remake. Not the remake, but uh, the new fragrance that came out about five, six years ago that is nothing like the uh, original Eau Sauvage, but um, Diorissimo, Diorescence, uh, Miss Dior, all of those are very, very uh, popular fragrances that fall under Dior and, of course, under the umbrella of LVMH. Now, this is a brand I don't speak too much about, but I have videos and mentioned and featured this brand. It's a Spanish brand called Loewe, and this is Loewe 001 Man, and this one came out along with Loewe 001 Woman. This one actually, for me, I felt like it was sort of, uh, you know, uh, taking inspiration from a Dior Homme, but more of a um, uh, leathery iris carrot combo, uh, maybe a little bit violet in here as well. It's very classy. I really enjoy it and uh, a wonderful release. The, 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 the house, it's a Spanish designer. They have so many fragrances. I haven't really gotten into the brand as well because I rarely see their fragrances here in the States and I'm one of those guys that likes to go and feel the product and wear the product. Not these days though, sadly. But uh, that's what I like to do and uh, none of their fragrances are sold here so they all have to be blind buys. But as far as a, a great fragrance for men, uh, 001 Man is great, 001 Woman is great. I have the EDP version. Uh, they did come out with an EDT version of this, which I never really picked up. I felt like, you know what, why bother? I have the EDP. Let me go with the EDP, and I love it already. But it's a, it's a, it's an underrated designer, but definitely one to know about. And it's certainly under uh, the LVMH umbrella from Spain. So that's Loewe. This is a very well-known house from Paris, France, Givenchy. But the, I'm going to talk about one of their... Um, classics right here. This is Givenchy Gentleman in, um, I think this is Eau de Toilette. And this one came out in the 70s. I believe it's the mid 70s. Uh, very um, musky, animalic, patchouli, woody uh, fragrance. Uh, it used to be, I mean, you know what? It does smell, s smells wonderful nowadays too. I mean, uh, it's been reformulated from uh, what the original was, but this smells really, really awesome. I, I really love it, but you gotta love the classics. This is definitely more on the classic side, uh, but 
even with its reformulations, I think the fragrance actually is still really, really a great smelling fragrance. But, you know, as I said, you got to love the older fragrances. You have to enjoy the classics. It's nothing new. And this, if released today as a designer, would, would be a complete flop. But you got to love the classics. This is a masterpiece. I would say that I would say that this is a masterpiece. But anyway, this is a brand under LVMH and as I said, this is one of the houses in addition to Guerlain and Dior that they're converting their, you know, their manufacturing or factory into producing the hand sanitizer. So they produce a lot of perfume and uh, of course, you know, those seem like the ones that they would do it at right away. And I think uh, the reason they're probably not using Louis Vuitton is because Louis Vuitton fragrances are only sold at the boutiques and I think they don't make as much perfume as the other three brands do, Christian Dior, Dior, Givenchy, and Guerlain, who are very, very uh, big brands, huge brands. But you got to love this one. Check it out. Or maybe even the newer series because the one in the black bottle, the Intense, the EDP, is amazing. Um, it's an awesome fragrance. Nothing like this. This is the classic. The, doesn't go out of style for me, but wonderful, the, wonderful brand, um, great fragrances. In fact, I think there was a lull with this brand for a while and I wasn't really um, digging the fragrances, but with their new uh, Gentleman uh, collection, the newly launched from three years ago, which now has the EDT, the EDP, and the Cologne version, are all... All three great. The EDP and the Cologne are better for me than the EDT, but still, I think that collection is really solid. Anyway, Givenchy, check them out if you know. And I'm not too familiar with the Givenchy's ladies' fragrances, uh, but if you have any favorites, let me know. Put some comments down so that I can find out. As I'd like to familiarize myself uh, with um, more of the fragrances from this house. As I said, I was really not into the fragrances for a while with this brand. I don't know what happened. But thankfully, in 2017, when they launched the uh, G Gentleman Givenchy or Givenchy Gentleman, I'm always confused because they have two different, three different series. Uh, when they launched that, I liked it. And then all of a sudden, when they launched the EDP, I was really wowed by it. And then the Cologne now is also out. Anyway, check out Givenchy Fragrances, which is also under the LVMH umbrella. Now, of course, Louis Vuitton makes some great fragrances, but they are a pricier. I have Les Sables Roses here and Ombre Nomad here. And these fragrances are um, more expensive. They are on the pricier side. They're uh, in the um, niche side of things and um, not necessarily like overly niche, but it's more like a... I, I shouldn't say niche. I, I'm, what I'm going to say is more like the designer's private collections. So they are pricier, but the, the Louis Vuitton fragrances are all refillable. Um, and so once you get a bottle and you run out, you can refill it for a lot less than what you paid for the whole bottle. Of course, don't break the bottle or don't throw it away. But um, there are some great fragrances like La Sable Roses is awesome. And then also uh, Ombre Nomad is awesome. Both of the fragrances are great. They are on the pricier collection rather than the regular price collection. So you do pay a pretty penny. But the two together are wonderful. Ombre Nomad and Les Sabre Roses. Ombre Nomad is uh, more of an oud and um, a little bit of rose, light on the rose, and a little bit of fruity touches, and some uh, spices, and some uh, resinous and balsamic notes. And then, of course, Les Sable Roses is more rose with a little oud and some. Um, I think I feel like there's a little bit of aquatic touch in here, but wonderful rose, and the two together, uh, awesome stuff. But the collection has a lot of fragrances, a lot of fragrances now since 2016. They've been cranking them out, and the perfumer at Louis Vuitton is Jacques Cavalier. He makes a lot of fragrances. And uh, I think they have a few more that are slated to come out, but with this whole thing going on, I don't know if they've been um, uh, postponed or whatever. And uh, of course, as I said, they're not using the Louis Vuitton factories um, to create the sanit hand sanitizer, but uh, maybe they are, I don't know. But a great house. I really enjoy Louis Vuitton's fragrances. Again, they are on the pricier side. But they're awesome. Um, I'm going to talk about Aqua de Parma next. And Aqua de Parma has some awesome fragrances. It's funny. I have uh, read a lot of fashion magazine and some luxury uh, magazines. And I remember, I think it was in the late 90s or early 2000s, when the resurgence for Aqua de Parma happened. Like, 
And at that time, I, I was always very curious about fragrances. And at that time, I was like, okay, I, I need to get my hands on a bottle of the classic Aqua de Parma cologne. It's wonderful. And I had read that, you know, actors and actresses are using the the, the fragrance. It's unisex. It's uh, fresh, refreshing. So I, I, that's what really got me into the, to the, the brand. But I didn't really start getting into it a lot until Fico de Amalfi came out, the fig fragrance, the blue one, and I really loved it. Then Mirto de Panarea, and then of course the Oud, uh, wonderful fragrance. The Oud is a, a great Oud. Uh, it's a synthetic Oud. It's not a, an, a tradition. Uh, it's not an authentic or real Oud that smells, you know, kind of very animalic because those Ouds tend to be uh, like that, uh, whereas the synthetic Ouds are more wearable for me. I, I can wear them easily. But uh, it's a great Italian luxury brand under LVMH that got its start in the, I think it's in the early 1900s. It could be late 1800s. I didn't do my research on uh, Aqua di Parma, but um, either way, they make great great fragrances, but uh, I think they partnered with LVMH either in the late 2000s or very early 2010s. And of course now they're everywhere. In fact, uh, the new uh, Ouds are, uh, in the Dark Collection, they're no longer brownish anymore. They are now completely black. And so uh, they've done a re facelift of some kind. And um, the uh, people ask me about my review of Colonia Oud. It used to be called Colonia Intensa Oud, but they've changed the Intensa. They've dropped it, and now it's just called Colonia Oud. So if you have a bottle that says Colonia Intensa Oud, it's the same thing as Colonia Oud. I, I do hear about reformulations, though, and then, uh, you know, fragrance is not lasting a long time. Of course, it is a conglomerate. They do reformulate these fragrances all the time. They, they come. They have a laboratory. I'm sure they're changing it all the time. And of course, LVMH fragrances are definitely uh, IFRA compliant because you know they sell all over the world. And of course, Europe, where um, I don't think we have. No, in in the USA, we do not have IFRA compliancy. But definitely in Europe, you have to be. Anyway, it's a great house, a great niche house, and I love. A lot of their fragrances from this house and last but not least one of their more recent acquisitions or sellings or you know the, with the brand selling to LVMH is uh, M MFK Maison Francis Kirkjan and of course Grand Soir being a fine example of a wonderful amber warm spicy gooey very very wearable amber and one of the best fragrances for me of course there's Baccarat Rouge from Maison Francis Kirkjan and um, many other fragrances, Absolute Pour Le Soir, uh, Aqua Universalis Forte, Aqua Vitae Forte, Oud Satin Mood, Oud Silk Mood, so many fragrances. This house started in the late 2000s, and um, if you watch my Oriental Fragrances video, I mentioned uh, that um, he did some fragrances for a brand called Indult, called Tehota, and, and among uh, a few others, and I think right after he did those fragrances, Francis Kirkjian, he launched uh, Maison Francis Kirkjian. So just like Less than 10 years later, they sold to uh, LVMH, and now LVMH makes all their fragrances. And a lot of people tell me that now their fragrances are not as strong. Is this true? Have you noticed a, a difference in the f formulations or the longevity of the fragrances? Uh, let me know your thoughts. But anyway, those are the brands that I know of that, uh, well, I know of uh, uh, all the other brands that I spoke to you about earlier, but these are the fragrances from the LVMH group that I own from the brands that they represent. But uh, of course, there's other brands. Now, did you guys know who LVMH was? Louis Vuitton, Moet and Hennessy. And did you know that these brands fall under this brand? And also, did you know that they are now uh, manufacturing or doing or creating the hand sanitizer because there's such a shortage out there. Now, I don't personally know if that hand, hand sanitizer from LVMH is going to make it to the States uh, because uh, the manufacturing plants are all in France, of course. But uh, hopefully you guys all have hand sanitizer and are staying healthy and, uh, you know, washing and or sanitizing your hands and staying uh, away from um, this... Um, crazy times that we are living in. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments about LVMH and what they're doing and some of the fragrance brands under them and then the fragrances I spoke to you about, let me know. Uh, a couple more things I want to mention before I leave. Just wanted to also let you know that you do know that I do a lot of um, giveaways on this channel. I think with what's going on in the world now, I think I'm 
going to slow down on doing uh, giveaways sadly because uh with the fact that everything everyone's uh, really uh limited to going out and things like that i think it's best that we kind of calm that for a while and uh i do have a few that are already scheduled to go out more like like sooner than later but i'm not taking on any additional um at least worldwide giveaways because I don't know how mail is happening in the rest of the world. You'll see probably more uh, USA giveaways for a while until this is, you know, coming to an end because we don't know what, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world and I don't want to take on or, uh, you know, get worldwide giveaways sponsored here and there. So anyway, I want to try and reduce the giveaways for a while. But if there are giveaways, there will be more USA giveaways. And of course, I do have a few worldwide or not necessarily fully worldwide, but like, you know, open to the EU and things like that coming up. But once those go away, I think for a while, I'll just keep on doing videos without giveaways. And hopefully you guys are watching the videos and are enjoying them. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this long video. I hope you are staying safe. Thanks so much for tuning in again and uh, stay tuned for lots of great videos as long as I, I'm healthy and can do these videos. Um, and I will continue doing them for you guys. And, and again, if you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Let me know some of your favorite um, fragrances that are part of um, LVMH or under the LVMH umbrella. And let me know some of the brands that you like. Um, not necessarily all designer, because of course they own some niches as well. Again, thanks so much uh, for watching. Stay healthy. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.